Ladies and gentlemen, I am being mocked relentlessly for selling Alibaba stock because I clearly said in my previous videos that long term, I think I'm going to get a great return on Chinese stocks, number one. And number two, I've been stating that I have the patience of decades that I am willing to wait many, many, many years to get a future reward. Yes, I've been investing in tax advantage accounts for the past 11 years and I've never sold my index funds, but apparently I can't seem to wait a while for long-term returns. Anyway, I want to clarify very, very, very clearly, clearly clarify as a matter of fact, why I sold Alibaba stock and why I'm not going to buy it back. First, buying Alibaba stock was a mistake. I admit that but not for the reason that you think. The stock has gone down. It has plummeted and it has not gone back up and it sucks because you have a bunch of people out there that are buying other stocks, US stocks, large cap tech stocks, and they've been recently, recently rewarded by a rally in large cap US tech, which is fine with me. I don't care. I'm not, I don't get jealous if somebody buys a stock and then it goes up 100% in the next year. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking long term. People don't believe me, but whatever. When it comes to Chinese stocks, I believe they are, in my opinion, and I could be wrong. This is why I do not have my whole portfolio of Chinese stocks. But I believe they are irrationally sold off, and at some point they will recover. And by holding and embracing the volatility, I will be rewarded. But when I bought Alibaba stock, I bought it not because I just loved Alibaba and it was perfect and amazing, which, I mean, it is a great, it's a fantastic company. I can't dispute that. It's a great company. But it carries all the risks of an individual stock. You could have a great stock, a great company, and it plummets 80, 90%. Look what happened to Alibaba itself. But I found something that also has the Chinese economy, also basically tracks the Chinese stock market, but gives me less risk. And that ETF is the Franklin FTSE China ETF. It's the lowest expense ratio ETF I could find. Yes, I know, it doesn't have a lot of uh, liquidity. I, I, whatever, I don't care. I'm not selling this thing for a long time. So what I did is I sold Alibaba stock, which you see on here in the blue, and I bought the FLCH, ticker symbol, ticker symbol FLCH ETF which is basically a China large and medium cap ETF. Look at these two charts. What do you notice about these two charts? On a side note, don't forget to check out my pinned comment below to check out my Patreon. What is in my Patreon? You get access to a Discord community. You get access to me, Christopher Bell, certified public accountant. And if you sign up for the highest tier, the VT tier, you get to actually meet me in person every other week and talk to me. So check out the Patreon and the pinned comment below. Come join the Discord community and let's 20,000 X, baby. Woo! They seem very, very similar. That's right. Baba is a little bit more volatile than this ETF, but they basically move in tandem. They move almost in lockstep with each other. Alibaba stock, it's a great company, but it's it's cheap because of fear and pessimism around China. My theory is that the Chinese pessimism will eventually go away. So why would I just hold an individual stock in China when I could actually buy an ETF that is highly correlated with Alibaba and gives me less individual company risk? Because Alibaba could massively implode. They could continue to lose market share to competitors. Their margins could never recover. Why just have Alibaba stock? So by buying the individual stock, it was stupid. Not because I don't believe China long run will give me positive returns, but instead because I took on more risk than I needed to to still potentially make money from this investment theory that I have. So I looked at it and I said, okay, I have a couple thousand dollars that I've lost so far in unrealized gains in Alibaba. I sold the stocks at a loss. I sold all my Alibaba stock. At a loss. So I took a two, three grand loss on Alibaba, which is going to go onto my taxes and reduce my tax liability. This is called a tax loss harvest. And I bought a highly correlated asset. Now, call me crazy, but these lines seem to follow each other pretty closely. <laughs> okay. 
because they're highly correlated. So I got a loss on my tax return. And in return, I'm still following my thesis. So people are like, like oh, you sold Alibaba. You know, you're not Diamond Hands. No, I just picked something better that still fits my thesis. The thesis wasn't Alibaba. The thesis was, and you, if you look at my old videos, I've always said, I don't think this China thing is going to be so bad that the country just collapses and the stock market never recovers. I don't believe that's the case. I could be wrong. I don't believe that's the case. I think there's a lot of uh, irrational, in my opinion, fear baked into it. But I'm able to now save money on my taxes, but still invest according to the thesis that I originally invested in. So going forward, I don't think I'm going to buy any more individual stocks. I think if I have a thesis about a country, like I look at, let's say, India, I'm just pulling something down on my butt. Oh, India went down a lot. and Everybody hates India stocks because India, whatever. And I say, oh, okay, but the companies are growing. They're profitable, blah, 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 blah. Maybe I'll buy some Indian stocks. Well, instead of buying an individual stocks, I'll just buy an ETF, a total market ETF, or a close approximation to it, and still be able to execute my thesis without having to take the individual stock risk. So that's exactly what I did. I sold Alibaba stock. I'm, I'm not going to buy it back. <laughs> if I wanted to grift, I could, because then I could lower my cost basis. But uh, I, I'm not going to buy it back. I'm just going to hold this ETF, and if China recovers, which I'm hoping it does, then guess what? I will get... I mean, not exact returns of Alibaba, but I probably will get pretty correlated returns to Alibaba. Now, the perfect example of how this works is this is a snapshot from my, my taxes for from a, a year or two ago, whatever. This highlighted number down here is a capital loss. So I had a realized capital loss of 1053 Now, you may, oh, strong man, you're the worst investor. ha, ha, ha. The only time you can put something on your tax form is when you actually sell it. Let's say you buy a stock and it drops 90%. If you don't sell it, you don't get to use that loss on your taxes. If you have a ton of gains on stocks, which I have, I'm sitting on a decade or more of capital gains in my index funds. If I sold those, ouch, 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 ouch. But what I was able to do was tax loss harvest. I, I think I had VXUS, which is an international ETF. And I sold that at a loss because the whole stock market was down. And then I, the whole global market was down in 2022. I, th I believe that's when th this came from. And then I was able to buy VT. I took the loss. It goes on my tax return. It reduces my taxable income. And I have an ETF that matches my investment time horizon. So this is literally the only reason that I did it, besides obviously taking less risk with Alibaba. Now, if we look on the limit on the deduction of carryover of losses, According to the IRS, and this is going to be a whole other video, you can take and deduct up to $3,000. So the max number you're going to see right here in a year is $3,000 on your tax form. How this happens is you take all your gains. This is for simplifying it. You take all your gains. You take all your losses. You net them out. If the total net, uh, the total of the netting is negative, that's when it shows up here. So basically, I took all my gains, anything I sold for the year, and any losses, and they showed up here, and they netted out to about $1,000. This is the loss from the tax loss harvest. And that reduced how much tax I paid on my federal tax form. Unfortunately, I also have dividend income and interest, which is very infuriating, but whatever. <laughs> but basically, that's what you can do. So let's say you have a 10000 net, net, net loss, right? A net, net loss of 10000 you can use 3000 this year, and then the remaining 7000 can be used in future years. So if I took a massive loss, like Jeremy LeFay, for example, if he lost a million dollars in Tattoo Chef, he can offset the any future gains that he sells. Let's say he sells Tesla to gain. He can use his Tattoo Chef losses to offset that, and then any net losses, net net loss, could be used as 3000 So to simplify it, you're going to see negative 3000 here. That's the most you're going to see, okay? And I'm able to do that and save money on taxes and really not change my investment thesis. So there you go. I know. Ho, 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 ho. You, you got me. Oh, my God. I'm, I just, I, I paper-handed Baba and blah, 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 blah. No, I'm, in my opinion, I think I'm still staying with my investment thesis. But you think whatever you want. Anyway, guys, that's it. Hope you learned something about tax loss harvesting. This can only be done in taxable accounts. You may want to consider talking to a CPA before you do something like this. Because there's some rules that go into it. But that's basically what I did. Have a wonderful night. Cheers!